Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer committee for inviting me, uh, the AV company, and uh, I'll see you. Just gonna try to find the presentation. Okay, it's a bit uh, of a format on this computer, but uh, this will work. So, when I saw the the invitation of the speaking today, the only thing I could read was about this. So uh, I thought maybe I need some explanation. So I give you also a bit of explanation and introduction before I start with this talk. China is of course in the middle of the world and little Belgium is uh, just there in Europe. I'm from Belgium and just to compare a little bit, Belgium is in Europe. Europe has let's say 750 million inhabitants, China has about twice. Belgium, only 11 million inhabitants. This is a bit less than Shenzhen here. <laughs> so I come from the little town, medieval town Leuven, and Leuven has 100,000 inhabitants, and uh, about half of them are students. So you see the skyline is a little bit different. Shenzhen and Leuven. So that is where I come from. I was asked to me to, uh, to talk something uh, to talk about uh, the surgery, uh, thoracic surgery training in Europe. Well, actually, this does not exist. So my advice is go to Asia to learn it, and that's why I'm here for us. As you all know, and you have seen it already before, Team Asia uh, won the Masters Cup of Thoracic Surgery in 2015 in Lisbon. So you are really the people who can, uh, who can learn it from. But I also won a little prize for the best overall performance. So maybe I can just talk, uh, give a talk about uh, the history of the thoracic surgery training in Europe. A little bit about the European legislation and how far we are now, because there is indeed a thoracic surgery training, but uh, it needs to be a bit more in a European format than uh, it was uh, some years ago. So let's start with the history of surgical training. In 1904, there was a landmark lecture on surgical training given at the Yale University by uh, William Halstead. Halstead is one of the four founding fathers of the Johns Hopkins uh, University Hospital in Baltimore and he was influenced uh, by his teacher, his German teacher, and that's why uh, we, start at, uh, we start with the history of surgical training in Europe. His teacher was uh, Theodore Billroth and he was stating that the resident must have intense and repetitive opportunities to take care of surgical patients. The resident must acquire an, underst an understanding of the scientific basis of surgical disease and the resident must acquire skills in patient management and technical operations of increasingly complexity with great enhanced responsibility and independence. So since then, actually the more you see, the more you do, the more you learn, the better you get. Surgery is a science, a medicine, of course, but it is also a craft. Surgery, uh, some of you know uh, French already have seen, so uh, chirurgie, uh, this comes from the Greek care, which means hands, so work with your hands. And there was a sort of master surgeon versus pupil resident symbiosis, and it worked very well. <coughs> but in the meanwhile, we had general <coughs> surgery coming to subspeciality evolutions with a lot of subspecialties as you see. And then the, f the further question is, what about thoracic surgery? Should it be cardiothoracic, general thoracic, vascular and thoracic? I already had some uh, talks about what about the esophagus and thoracic surgery. There was also the technical evolution, some say a revolution, but I know Dr. Uh, CEO is not really a fan of the, of the word revolution. We came from open to laparoscopy, thoracoscopy, Robot in the portal, notes even, and uh, I saw a lot about non intubated awake and tubeless surgery the last weeks. 
So the idea of the master surgeon versus pupil resident may not be true anymore. Do we need basic or general surgery treatment? Specialized surgical training in one or more subspecialties? Scientific training and knowledge, that is of course very important and it should be something like lifelong learning. But there are some questions. How many years of training do we need for this? How many hours a week do we have to work for this? And how many procedures have to be performed before you can do this on your own? So as I told you, Europe is a bit different. It's not like China. It is all little different countries, different legislations, different So in 2012, Professor Tony Ritz did a survey on thoracic surgery in all of these European countries. It was in 28 countries he did this survey and he asked some questions in all um, thoracic units to see what was the practice at that moment. So about the designation of the specialty, there was a monospecialty specialty in 13 countries out of 25. And uh, if you look carefully, for instance, to Belgium, Thoracic surgery, as such, does not exist in Belgium, officially. In 2010, there was a paper uh, from uh, Douglas Wood about the overall years of surgical training amongst the ESTS and EACTS members. And you see that the length of thoracic training is uh, <coughs> quite variable between 4 and 10 years of uh, training. If you look to the length of the specialized training, so only thoracic surgery, then you see that some of these surgeons didn't even have any uh, thoracic surgery training, but most of them were in between two to five years, and in some uh, even one longer. If you look to the length of cardiac training, because a lot of surgeons in Europe are also cardiothoracic surgeons, then you see that uh, half of the ESDS members which are mostly the general thoracic surgeons, and they didn't have any cardiac training, but others uh, did have more than two years. So if you look to our survey uh, in Europe uh, in 2012, then you saw that in nine countries there was five years training, in eight countries six years, and in six countries more than six years of thoracic training. Dedicated training in thoracic surgery was uh, in between two and five years. If you look at the number of procedures as a operating surgeon, that is also varying a lot. It was not staging a state in, uh, in nine countries, but there was a range uh, in between 35 and 560 procedures in Switzerland to the median of 120 procedures that should be done by our own before you get started as independent surgeon. What about the average working hours? Dr. Sadaba uh, did um, publish a paper that also in 2010. Uh, we can see that about one third of the respondents uh, had a current number of average working hours uh, in between 50 and 60 hours, one third uh, in between 60 and 70, and the rest more than 70 hours a week. And if he asked them what they uh, would prefer to do, and it was a little bit lower in working hours. I don't know what is in China here, but maybe we'll hear this uh, today. What about the training centers? How many trainers and training centers are there needed? Uh, well, if you look, it is varying in Europe between one uh, center per 600,000 uh, inhabitants and one per six million inhabitants, with a median of one per 1.5. I guess this is even uh, quite a lot. If I didn't look here, uh, I guess it will be one per, I don't know, five million or something. So that was about the history and evolution of uh, surgical training in Europe. I'll tell you something about European legislation. Because the European Union started in 1952 with only six countries and uh, enlarged. Uh, gradually to 28 countries right now and is even uh, getting uh, bigger uh, for the moment. So that needs, uh, instead of all the different uh, legislations, that needs some organization 
And the European Parliament uh, had some uh, directives, which are in fact the laws that have to be implemented in all the several uh, countries. And this was um, uh, stated. This was the first law about the uh, aspects of organizing of working time, also better known as the working uh, the European working time directives. And as you see there, it was stated that it was a, a, a maximum, not a minimum, but a maximum of 48 hours a week. And here they state that uh, there was also um, for doctors in training. This was implemented in Belgium law in uh, February 2011, and we'll see when that, uh, what the results of this uh, were a little bit later. Another uh, of these directives was concerning the recognition of the professional qualification, and they said that any uh, specialty training uh, should be a minimum of five years, and the goal is that uh, if you have a specialty training, for instance, in Belgium, that is also uh, possible to uh, work as a thoracic surgeon uh, in Poland, for instance. But this is not really uh, the, uh, happening uh, at this moment. But this is this is already uh, the, the European directives. So, uh, what is uh, what do we have else in Europe? We have the European Union of Medical Specialists, the UEMS. Uh, because it was uh, stated in French, Union Européenne des Médecins Spécialistes. Um, it's 37 countries, more than 50 specialties, and it's representing actually uh, more than uh, 1,600,000 specialized doctors. And it has a lot of sections, so um, there's a section general surgery, uh, the section cardiothoracic surgery, and they both had uh, the divisions of uh, thoracic surgery. But in uh, 2013, um, because of the layout of these slides, it's not on here, but for, um, in 2013, the new section of thoracic surgery was founded and the uh, uh, actual president is uh, Tony Lerit. The European Union of Medical Specialists have some, uh, has some uh, areas of expertise. Um, the first one is, of course, continued medical education with the uh, famous CME accreditation uh, points. Um, Postgraduate training, of course, and quality assurance in uh, specialist practice. Now, how we do this in practice? There is a European Board of Cardiothoracic Surgery, Cardiothoracic Surgery section of the UEMS, and there is also since 2013 the European Board of Thoracic Surgery created by the Thoracic Surgery section of the UEMS. Both have their independent uh, examinations. Uh, there is one examination uh, at the year and it's mostly around the big conferences. So like uh, the ECS conference in Naples, there will be the, the exam of the Thoracic Board. So how far are we today? in Europe, in Belgium, and especially in Italy, where I am from. We have both, uh, we have two uh, big scientific organizations, the EACDS, so the European Association of Cardiac Thoracic Surgery, and the ESDS, the European Society of Thoracic Surgeons. Both are uh, um, providing uh, training programs uh, to be prepared on the uh, thoracic uh, or cardiothoracic board examinations, and the ECDS is also providing some uh, uh, preparation for the European Board of Thoracic Surgeons because in some countries uh, the thoracic surgeons have to be uh, also cardiothoracic surgeons. So I will go on with the ECDS uh, program because uh, I'm more familiar with this one. The European Education Flat Platform on uh, Thoracic Surgery. Here you see a picture of Gilbert Massard, who is the director of the education uh, program of the ESDS. And some of uh, you uh, have already been in this uh, institution, I heard. So the ESDS school is in fact uh, a school uh, which has uh, some uh, basic pillars. Um, the first one is a knowledge pillar. 
is known as the Intelli School in uh, Turkey, where um, two-day courses, theoretical courses about some topics in um, uh, general thoracic surgery are given, and this is the theoretic preparation and uh, examination of the OP board. Um, a second one, the second pillar, is the skills pillar, it's the Ilagur School. Um, it's not an Ilagur anymore, it's uh, in Strasbourg in the, the UCAT, uh, where the practical skills are practiced. They start, um, let's say, about uh, 12 years ago with uh, VATS training, but since anyone, uh, everyone knows VATS, now they do ECMO training, robotics, trick, catches, well, like it's uh, stated here. You have also other courses uh, for academic competences, like uh, medical writing, uh, methodology, um, and other stuff. In the, next uh, pillar. There's also a, a Russian school right now, but that is not so important for the, the European people. Uh, you have the ESDS textbook, um, uh, which should be known for the uh, theoretic uh, part of the, of the exam. Uh, and of course you have the, uh, the annual uh, conference. So all this together prepares for the European Board of Thoracic Surgery uh, examination. There was also um, in 2014 the uh, trainee survey uh, in which there was looked for the needs uh, that, that uh, trainees uh, have uh, and to better uh, to, to uh, uh, improve the, the ECS school in the future. And since 2014, so since last year, there was also the ECS trainee symposium uh, during the, the, the conference uh, and uh, the goal is that this will be annually now. So about the structure of general uh, thoracic surgery in Europe and especially the structure of the units. The first publication about this was in 2001 and actually since then there already changed uh, something. Uh, for instance the um, people in Denmark had uh, a lot of centers and they came back to uh, four centers based on this uh, paper. These uh, guidelines were uh, uh, revised in 2014 uh, and for instance you can see uh, what should be needed for a standard general thoracic uh, unit and a uh, high specialized uh, general thoracic unit. So how far are we now uh, for the training centers? Uh, in Denmark, I already told you, there's a reduction from 12 to 4 centers and thoracic surgeons only can do thoracic surgery and vice versa. So no cardiac surgery anymore, no general surgery anymore. In the UK, from next year on, that will be the same. There you had a group of the cardiac thoracic surgeons, but now they have to choose uh, for cardiac or thoracic from the start. In the Netherlands, there were more than 50 centers performing uh, thoracic surgery. Now you, uh, you get collaboration between centers on one location. So they mostly go from four uh, centers in the region to one location. Then they can gather the surgeons and the young girls a little bit. So they have more than one uh, hundred by major sections a year. But uh, if you see the numbers here, this is uh, not really a lot, of course. Switzerland, they uh, now have a separate board of thoracic surgery. And in Sweden, there was also a reduction between centers Slovenia, I spoke with people uh, last week, they have reduction to three centers in thoracic surgery. How far are we in Belgium? Well, there's still no recognition for thoracic surgery yet. There's still discussion about what we should do. Uh, normally spoken, we are trained as uh, general surgeons who do first um, six years in general surgery, so they talk now about five years general surgery and two and a half years thoracic or three three or just starting uh, from the start five years thoracic surgery only uh, without any general surgery. The debate goes on and I hope um, so in the spring we will know the answer. There's also a proposal for criteria of recognition um, and this should be according to those people in Belgium 17 anatomical lateral sections, 10 major pleural sections, and then uh, 20 thoracic wall diaphragm and mediastinal sections. So a total of 100 procedures plus the local of minor procedures 
uh, as the first surgeon. This is also a proposal and not recognized yet. I looked myself to the impact of the European Working Time Directives, and since the implementation, we noted that there was a significant decrease in the daily working time. Um, you can see that uh, most of the residents worked uh, in between 11 and 14 hours before the implementation, and now most, most of them work between uh, 9 and 12 hours. So there was a significant reduction in uh, working times, but what we also saw was that the medical administrative workload, so just the paperwork, increased significantly. So if you look here, most of the, uh, of the time of the day they had to do uh, about uh, one to two hours uh, paperwork a day, and now we get from uh, two, three, and even four hours paperwork a day. So they're working less hours, they're working more uh, paperwork, so I guess they're operating less. These were also the conclusions. So how is thoracic surgery training in Leuven, where I was trained? This is our hospital, uh, the whole parking lot here is now also building, but I'll look for uh, another picture next time. The unit was uh, founded in 1994 by Professor Tony Rutt, and some of you uh, uh, certainly know him. Uh, before there were uh, several subunits in general surgery. The team uh, is of uh, seven staff surgeons in general thoracic surgery. We have three senior residents in thoracic surgery and four residents in general surgery. So not as big as the units here, uh, but still the biggest in Belgium. The medication in general thoracic surgery, we have uh, 1,800 procedures a year and we do about uh, Everything in general thoracic surgery, uh, meaning lung surgery, is which heal meastinal, pleural, thoracic wall, lung transplantation, with let's say uh, 60 procedures a year, and even pediatric thoracic surgery. My personal training, I had, uh, as I said before, six general uh, surgery years, uh, one year abroad, and uh, 16 months in thoracic surgery. After that, I did one year thoracic surgery in our unit. And uh, thereafter, I was one year consultant general sur uh, surgeon and thoracic surgeon in an affiliated non university hospital. And I was associate thoracic surgeon uh, one day a week in uh, the unit where I now. Uh, I won this uh, AME ESDS uh, prize, and so for the last month, I have been in the first affiliated hospital of the Medical University of Guangzhou, uh, Professor Her. And my personal training with the uh, amount of procedures done right now is uh, about uh, 800 procedures done um, of which I did 380 myself uh, I don't know if this is uh, a lot or not uh, because I don't know what is the amount of procedures done in, uh, in China but I would like to hear it uh, from you so if you compare it with the proposition of the uh, Belgian uh, uh, board of the 70, 10 and 20 resections. I did 34 uh, major lung resections with one sleeve, then two, uh, only two uh, uh, major pleural, um, and let's say about 10 uh, thoracic wall and mediastinum. But you could add also 10 uh, esophageal or lung transplant resections, and there I did a little bit more. So I'm not finished yet, I have some work to do. My further plans are going to uh, Marseille, to uh, the Service de Chirurgie Thoracique des Maladies de l'Esophage et de Transplantation Populaire, uh, chez uh, Professor Thomas et Giorno, for the following six months, and I plan to do my uh, EBTS examination in June 2016. I would like to thank all uh, my team members, uh, Professor Delay, the head of the department, and the other ones, as you see here. So I guess the future of uh, thoracic surgery is bright. I have seen this here in uh, China, and I guess the sky is the limit. Um, if you uh, see uh, this magnificent tower in Guangzhou, I've been out there, beautiful. And uh, these two boys here are my sons, spoken of the future. Shishen, thank you.